Thanks for joining us on What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. Here with us is Jim Demers, one of the original organizers of writeinbiden.com, a strategist as well with the group. Sir, I appreciate you being with us. Great to be with you. Um, if anyone at home doesn't know, basically this is um, a campaign, although maybe right now that's not the best word, or an effort um, to write in the president's name um, on the Democratic ballot on Tuesday um, because of this fight, we can say, with the DNC. Uh, so my first question for you is, why did you get involved and why did you want to see action here? Well, clearly, after the DNC made its decision and its uh, rule that it passed conflicted with our law, uh, we knew that if we we're going to get Joe Biden on the ballot, it would have to be through a write-in effort. So many of us feel that this is the most critical election of our time, that you know, you hear people all the time saying that democracy is at risk if Donald Trump wins the presidency again. And we truly do believe that. So our feeling is by organizing and getting this write-in effort underway, not only does it help send a really powerful message that voters in New Hampshire are concerned and willing to go the extra mile to not only vote for Joe Biden, but to write him in, but it also helps us lay the foundation for the big prize, which is November. And if, if you know the polls are right and this race between Joe Biden and Donald Trump turns out to be extremely close. New Hampshire's four electoral votes could be the deciding uh, state in the country. So our feeling was by organizing early, getting people engaged, getting the message out, we are laying the foundation so that we can have a winning effort uh, come November. How many people are on the ground working on this? So this is extremely out of the ordinary. Um, I've never seen anything like this in my life, but this truly is a volunteer grassroots effort. We have no campaign consultants. We have no pollsters. We are not doing TV advertising or radio advertising. We have one thing, and that is people. And it is amazing how many people have come out to be part of this effort. And I'll give you a good example. So on Monday night, we did a Zoom organizing meeting uh, for volunteers who will be working on election day. 264 people were on that call to learn what their responsibilities will be. And we have another Zoom training session coming up on Sunday night. We have 125 additional people signed up for that. All of that means that we've got every single polling place in the state of New Hampshire covered for uh, exposure as people walk into the polls. And what we've got people doing, which is quite unique, is they actually have got uh, political sign polls that start with the write-in Biden sign at the top of it. There is a huge uh, draft of the ballot so that people, as they walk in, see what the ballot will look like, and they see Joe Biden's name written on the bottom line. And then there's a, a, Q, a QV uh, code where a person can take their phone, hold it up, and download the instructions on how to write in his name if they aren't certain how to do that. And this is the first time that kind of technology has ever been used. And it's quite innovative because you're not allowed to bring campaign literature into a polling place here. But if a person has it on their phone, they can bring their phone in, they've got it, and they can look at it. And when they leave, they take it with them. So. It's quite innovative, quite creative, and people are really pumped up to be doing this kind of exercise. Has there been door knocking too? So some communities have had door knocking that they put together themselves. Some communities have had phone banking that has gone on. Um, we have got 22 get out the vote visibility events taking place this coming weekend. Um, we have got some political leaders coming in. Uh, Congressman Ro O'Connor will be traveling around the state, um, talking to voters, getting them engaged in what's going to happen. Uh, Boston Mayor Michelle Wu is coming in. We have had uh, help with this from Senator Cory Booker, Governor Pritzker, 
um, the governor of Massachusetts, um, Maura Healey. We've gotten a lot of attention. I mean, this is really unique because it's less of a campaign and more of an educating process where we're making people aware they have a right to do this and then explaining how to do it. Are you finding that some people are surprised there even is a Democratic primary? So we're finding that people are disappointed that there is a conflict between the DNC rules and the New Hampshire law. Um, and a lot of people are confused that they just assume that there is a, you know, an aggressive primary and that the president's name is on the ballot. Um, so that's really been a big part of what we've had to do is educate voters that his name's not on the ballot. But if you want to send a message and stand up for democracy, the way to do it is to vote for the guy who has beaten Donald Trump before, and that is Joe Biden. Let me ask you this. Um, the president endorsed the new calendar, making South Carolina go first. Um, so he knew he didn't put his name on the ballot here. What do you say to the people who say, if Joe Biden didn't make the effort in New Hampshire, why should you? Uh, because this election is way too critical to be sitting on the sidelines and not being engaged. This is going to be a truly a battle for our democracy that this is going to be Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. And so it is critical for people to be engaged, to be united, and to make sure that Donald Trump does not win again. But probably more important, or, or at least equally important, is it gives us a new message to tell the DNC as well, because they are going to be redoing the calendar for 2028. If we did nothing here, we would have no story to tell. But if New Hampshire voters come out, do the extra effort of writing in Joe Biden, there is a major story that can be told about the New Hampshire voters, how engaged they are, how seriously they take this, how seriously they took the reelection of Joe Biden. And I think that will help us when the calendar gets redone for the next election after this one. Do you think eventually it could be changed back? I truly do. I think... One, we have, we're going to have a wonderful story, I believe, because there are going to be so many people that do uh, write in Joe Biden's name. But also, we've had a lot of the next generation of potential presidential candidates who have been helping us with this. So they're going to be important messengers as well when the DNC starts to look at the next calendar. The DNC isn't happy with New Hampshire, obviously. It called the upcoming primary both meaningless and detrimental something the Attorney General and Secretary of State were not happy about at all. What was your reaction right. to that? Uh, so I thought it was a ridiculous comment, as most people have thought. Um, and I don't know that it really was the DNC as much as it was a couple of members of the Rules and Bylaws Committee who had worked on this. Um, so I, our feeling is we're not really interested or engaged in what an out-of-state uh, political group is talking about. We have a primary that is taking place in New Hampshire, and our focus is on winning it. Uh, I saw somebody else, you know, a volunteer in another publication who basically said they felt pressure to, to get this to work. Do you feel that way? Is that a fair word to use? The only pressure I feel is what could happen in November. Um, I, I think this is one of the greatest examples of democracy at work. Um, you know, this whole campaign, people are talking about democracy. This is people, volunteers standing up, not out-of-state consultants telling us what, what to do. And it really is about people doing the extra effort of turning out and writing someone's name in. I don't feel any personal pressure. I just feel like this is critical uh, so that we have a winning election come November. Do you have a number or percentage that you're aiming for in order to call this right in effort a success? No, I think that this is so unique and so historic. We really don't know what the number will be. I'll be happy with any number that wins, but I will also tell you, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like no matter what happens? We have gotten voters engaged. We have started laying the foundation 
I think our four electoral votes are very much in play here in New Hampshire. So this is a critical part of what happens throughout the summer and into next fall or into this fall. Uh, I know there is some talk that that the counting um, could take a little bit longer um, because uh, the Secretary of State is basically saying that not only do you have to write in the president's name and have intent um, that that part of the name is correct, but you also have to fill in that oval. Uh, are you worried that that could provide some lag time in counting uh, these votes at the end of the night? Well, I think that because these ballots will be hand counted, it will be a little bit later than would normally take place, but it is the only race in the on the ballot. So it's not like there are 22 other campaigns going on for other seats. So I think that we're going to be able to see these results uh, before the evening is done. The Secretary of State is very confident that that's going to happen. He has been conducting training sessions. He's put out training uh, memos to all of the clerks and, and moderators on how to interpret ballots, how to count them. Um, I think it's going to go a lot smoother than people might think. And when it's done, people are going to be once again saying, New Hampshire knows how to run campaigns, that they they did it right, they got it right. Um, and I think people will be very happy and satisfied with with the uh, the work that the people are going to be doing at the polls. Uh, Jim, I should also mention to our viewers that Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson will be appearing um, on the Democratic ballot, just to let everybody know. Uh, but I appreciate your time. Thanks for your time this afternoon. You're welcome. It's been great being with you. Thank you.